This is podcast number eight and is entitled Manometry. Okay, we'll start with manometry. Manometry essentially is the measurement of pressure, so pressure measurement. And here we have our first type of pressure measurement, which is a barometer, which is used to measure atmospheric pressure. It consists of an inverted tube in generally a bath of some fluid, and the one I've shown here is mercury, given the chemical symbol Hg. We see the atmospheric pressure acting down along the surface that is open to atmosphere, and then the tube itself has a vacuum. So it's an inverted tube vacuum where the absolute pressure inside that tube is zero. Because of this um, vacuum and low pressure, the atmospheric pressure will force fluid to flow up that tube until <coughs> a certain height. And that height is related to the atmospheric pressure like here. So the atmospheric pressure, which is the pressure at point A, is equal to the pressure at point B, plus zero, which is the pressure at point C, plus rho, which is the density of mercury, g, the height of mercury. And that's equal to the atmospheric pressure. So depending on this height here, the distance between B and C, we're able to get an accurate measure for the atmospheric pressure. Essentially, the atmospheric pressure is equal to rho gh for this um, barometer. So the units of pressure. If water is used in a manometer, we can say that the density, which is a lot lower than that of mercury, is 1 by 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. Essentially, it's 1,000. The height of the uh, barometer, or the height of the fluid in the barometer, if water was used, would rise to 10.4 meters. That's why we often use mercury to measure such large pressures. So the pressure is often referred to in millimeters of Hg, millimeters of mercury. An example of a typical atmospheric pressure would be 770 millimeters of Hg, millimeters of mercury. Another type of pressure measurement or manometer is this simple tube or piezometer that comes out from the side of a pipe flow, for example, or a pressure vessel and is turned through an angle of 90 degrees up a certain height. On the left you can see it in uh, front view and on the right in end elevation. We're going to look and see what are the pressure relationships between point A, point B and point C. C of course is open to atmosphere, so acting down on top of it is the atmospheric pressure. The pressure point A is equal to pressure point B because one, it's in the same fluid and two, it's at the same height. And that is equal to pressure point C plus the extra pressure that you get due to that column of water between B and C, which is equal to rho GH. A third type of pressure measurement, which you use sometimes uh, for larger pressures or measuring larger pressures, would be this U tube manometer. <clears throat> Again, this might be a pipe flow, point A, where we're looking at end elevation along a pipe, and it has density. One, we'll say the blue is water and that the darker color in the manometer is mercury. So two fluids that aren't mixing. <clears throat> and how do we relate? The question is how do we relate the height of this tube, H2 or H1, to the pressure at point A? We start by saying that the pressure point C is equal to the pressure at point B plus rho 1 G H1. So that's that column of water on the left hand side. Pressure point C is also equal to the pressure point A plus rho 1 G H1. And this is equal to the pressure point D because the pressure point C and D are on the same line, same height in the same fluid. So to continue our calculations on the next slide, we have <coughs> that the pressure point D is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus rho 2 G H2. Combining those, we get Pa plus rho 1 G H1 is equal to P atmosphere plus rho 2 G H2, which gives us our answer that the gauge pressure at point A is equal to rho 2 G H2 minus rho 1 G H1. To get the absolute pressure, you'd simply add atmospheric pressure. A further type of pressure measurement is this U-tube manometer. What happens sometimes in a pipe flow, as you see here, we're having flow from left to right, is that as the fluid comes in from left to right, passes A, then there's some sort of blockage. It could be a valve, it could be a, constr a constriction in the flow, anything. But the pressure, because of this uh, blockage, 
the pressure changes between point A and point B. The pressure drops between point A and point B. That has the effect of moving or putting extra pressure on point A that pushes down along the U-tube and pushes up the heavier fluid, the mercury, up towards B. So we can see experimentally that when this happens, that the pressure drop is directly proportional to this height. Let's do some calculations to see how. We're looking to find what the pressure drop is between PA and PB, so we define that as delta P. Delta P is equal to rho GH of the mercury minus rho GH of the water. And to simplify it, we get delta P is equal to HG rho of the mercury minus rho of the water. Two rules you have to remember with ranometry. First, find a datum level. Two, uh, a datum level are two points, one in each leg connected by con a continuous path uh, through uniform stationary fluid. And second, equate expressions for pressure at these two points. That concludes this podcast, podcast number eight on manometry.